Olá, boa tarde, sejam bem-vindos. Eu sou o Atlas, sou orientador do Education USA aqui no Rio de Janeiro. É um prazer é, mais uma vez dar início a mais um webinar organizado pelo Education USA no Brasil e pelos nossos colegas que são representantes de universidades nos Estados Unidos. O Education USA, para quem não sabe, é a fonte oficial de informações sobre estudos e oportunidades acadêmicas nos Estados Unidos. A nossa missão é trazer informações que são precisas, abrangentes, uh, sobre oportunidades. Né? Hoje, os nossos apresentadores vão falar especificamente sobre um tema que é muito popular, muito interessante para alunos brasileiros, que é financial aid, né? que é o auxílio financeiro, as possibilidades de receber bolsa de estudo, ou o que, que alguma família precisa fazer para se planejar financeiramente para fazer o sonho de estudar nos Estados Unidos acontecer. A sessão de hoje está sendo gravada e ela vai ser disponibilizada no canal YouTube do Education USA Brasil. Nossos apresentadores vão falar por volta de 45 minutos e lá no finalzinho a gente vai ter a chance de fazer perguntas e conversar mais diretamente com os apresentadores. Uh, então, sem muito mais a dizer, é, quero agradecer os representantes que estão aqui hoje da Belloc College, da Center College, Gettysburg College e Illinois Wellesley University. Uh, sem muito mais a dizer, eu vou passar a palavra então para a primeira uh, apresentadora, que é a Daniele Wolfberg. Uh, it's with you, Danielle. Thank you so much and thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, me and my colleagues are going to talk a little bit about the liberal arts. We're going to start with the history of the liberal arts and sciences and what a liberal arts and science education really gives to students. And then we're going to talk about financial aid and scholarships that are available at a liberal arts and science college. And then we're going to have time at the end for questions. So as we're presenting today, make sure you're thinking of those questions you might have for us and type those in the chat bar. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We'll start with introductions. Again, my name is Danielle Wolfberg. I am one of the associate directors of admission at Gettysburg College. And I'm going to pass it on to Joy Joy. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here virtually. Uh, my name is Joy Joy, uh, and I am the Assistant Director of International Recruitment at Center College. And I'm going to pop it over to Hernan. Thank you, Joy Joy. Hi, everyone. My name is Hernan Santa Cruz. I'm the Assistant Director of International Admissions at Beloit College, where I graduated from myself as an international student. And I'm delighted to be with you all today. Thanks for joining us. And I'll pass it on to Kate. Hi all, welcome. Thanks for joining us. My name is Kate and I um, am, am an admissions counselor at Illinois Wesleyan University and I oversee um, our international territories. All right, I will start us off by talking about uh, the many different types of institutions we have here in the United States. So as you can see on the map, uh, there are uh, there are many different types of uh, universities and colleges in the U.S., ranging from big public universities, private universities, Ivy League schools. There is more than 4,000 institutions for students to choose from. So lots of options, lots of choices. And among those 4,000, there are about 228 liberal arts institutions, like our schools here today. Uh, liberal arts colleges uh, and institutions make up about 15% of all colleges and universities in the United States. So uh, I will let one of my colleagues talk about uh, what liberal arts colleges are and the history of liberal arts colleges. Thank you, Joy Joy. So the idea behind a liberal arts college is essentially to impart a flexible curriculum within the students and to allow as much freedom as possible, which is where the word liberal for liberal arts colleges mean. It doesn't mean politically or in any other sense other than the root word from Latin, uh, you know, liber, meaning uh, freedom or libertad. And so uh, the openness that is expressed in our curriculums really are designed to to help you explore a variety of different areas for you to study a variety of different disciplines and to be able to combine a variety of different areas together. So when we talk about the arts part of liberal arts, it doesn't just necessarily mean the visual arts like painting uh, or like music, but rather the areas of study and mastery that we want you to be involved in. And something important to consider as well is that the liberal arts colleges in the United States 
States are Liberal Arts and Sciences College. We just tend to abbreviate and make things a little shorter, uh, you know, for the sake of clarity. But we can offer, say, majors in chemistry and biology and at the same time have the humanities and the arts. So the idea is that by coming to a liberal arts college, you get the freedom to explore a variety of different avenues and become a more well-rounded person as a result of it. Uh, it has a long history within the United States. I think it's based on a very Renaissance type idea that the person should be well-rounded and able to discuss politics and rhetoric and philosophy and science at the same time. And the first liberal arts college in the United States uh, was Harvard University, which I think everyone has heard about, you know, uh, almost 400 years ago now. So it has a long tradition of making sure that the people that go through this type of education uh, very much become very well-rounded, well-equipped for a good life, and not just for one job or one profession, which is the important part to highlight because in many times in different countries around the world, we have an educational system that uh, kind of pushes us to choose a single career, uh, a very traditional career in many ways for the rest of our lives. But the purpose of a liberal arts education is to be able to develop yourself in more ways than just one. And precisely because you get to study different things, say, if you want to go into business, if you also study philosophy, you will be a better business manager and a business person as a result of that. So it's not about being just a specialist, but about having inter uh, disciplinary approaches across the sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities as well. So there's been a long history, and the liberal arts uh, is why it has really established itself as one of the best educational systems in the world. Thank you, Hernan. And another benefit of the liberal arts and sciences is the academic flexibility that we offer to our students. So when you're looking to apply to a liberal arts institution, you apply to the college. You don't have to apply to a specific program. And that's really important because it's really intimidating at 16, 17, and 18 to be asked what you want to do for the rest of your life. So we allow our students to come onto our campuses, take some different classes that they didn't have exposure to in high school, get to connect with our faculty members, our upperclassmen, and even job shadow our alumni and see what they do day to day and see if that's what they can imagine themselves doing for the rest of their lives. And often at a liberal arts college, you have two years before you actually have to declare your major. So you have time to explore our programs before you have to figure out what it is you want to do for the rest of your life. As Hernan like talked about, there's academic requirements outside your major. So you're not if you're biology major, you still have exposure to humanities and art classes. You still have exposure to the social sciences. And the reason this is so important is because a lot of the jobs you apply for when you graduate don't even exist yet. So how can we best prepare our students for the unknown job market? We do that by making sure they have a depth of knowledge around their major, a breadth of knowledge around all these other disciplines, and then these skill-based requirements that are going to be the help them be successful in any career that they enter. So another part of the liberal arts is a focus on skills. Our graduates graduate with strong communication skills, strong problem solving skills. They're global citizens. They have experience working in diverse group of individuals. So when they graduate, they're not only prepared to enter any job market, but they're ready to be successful in any job market that they enter. I just had a work meeting this morning and we learned a stat and it's actually the average job changes that students have when they graduate is 17 times. A, an average person will change their job 17 times in their life and they'll change their industry five times. So we don't want students to kind of limit themselves to just one type of academic field when they're in college. We want them to have exposure to all these different academic fields and then also, again, these skills so that they're successful in any type of career field they enter when they graduate. At a liberal arts college, it's really popular for our students to double major or have a major and a minor. So a major is going to be about a third of your classes. This will be on your diploma when you graduate. And then a minor is kind of a specialization. So this is usually six to eight classes. It's kind of um, an emphasis. Uh, so it's not as in-depth as a major. So you have the opportunity to study more than one thing at a liberal arts institution. You can major in like subjects, such as say biology and chemistry, 
or unrelated subjects. I have some international students on our campus that are double majoring in computer science and music. Uh, they want to do computer science after they graduate, but they're not ready to give up their passion for music yet. So they're able to do both things at a liberal arts institution. There's also this flexibility to create your own major at a liberal arts institution. So I ha we have a lot of students a lot of times that'll come up to us and maybe want a really specific major and we encourage them to look at some of the things our students are doing on campus. Um, or maybe look at some of the things our graduates have done or look at the internships our students have. But a lot of times you can actually create your own major so our students can actually work with an advisor and kind of create coursework that is going to help them create their own major on campus. So some examples of this might be sports media within communication or maybe public health within urbanized areas. So there is this flexibility to actually create your own major. A lot of our classes also have integrated career prep. So our students are having those skills, uh, hands-on learning opportunities before they even graduate. A lot of our students are doing research. Our students are having internships. A lot of our classes and majors actually require research and internships before students graduate. And then we also have a lot of high impact co-curricular programs. So our students, they're, yes, they're learning in the classroom, but there's a lot of opportunities at a liberal arts institution to learn outside the classroom as well. So I know Beloit has an amazing entrepreneurship program. Gettysburg has an amazing leadership program. So there's opportunities to continue building those skills outside the classroom at a liberal arts institution as well. So you heard from Danielle about all the different academic flexibility that are offered at liberal arts colleges. And I want to deep dive a little deeper into what the classroom experience is like. So typically at liberal arts colleges, we have a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And what that means for students is that uh, professors are able to provide greater attention and personalize their support for their students. So whether that means professors engaging with their students on an individual basis in the classroom or having lunch together in the dining hall talking about you know, various different things that uh, the students are learning or that they're interested in researching. So a small school setting allows for these types of interaction between the students and their professors. Uh, so there's a lot of high uh, impact advising from faculty and staff uh, for the students at liberal arts colleges uh, because they are able to focus on just a few students instead, uh, instead of hundreds and thousands of students. Uh, since liberal arts colleges tend to be smaller in terms of the student size, uh, there's also a lot of room for deep discussions and engagements uh, inside the classroom. So professors get to know their students well and they understand what their students personal, academic, and professional goals are, and students get to know their peers very well as well. Um, in addition to personalized support and high-impact advising, uh, there is greater accessibility to school resources at smaller liberal arts colleges. Uh, and since many of these services are designed to support and assist students, uh, students are able to take full advantage of these services without having to compete for access. So if a student needs to go to the writing center to get help with writing a, writing a paper or an assignment, uh, there will be a lot of writing consultants to help them. Um, and this, this is true of these access to opportunities are true for experiential learning opportunities. Uh, so many of the liberal arts colleges are only for undergraduate students uh, and oftentimes opportunities to do research or do internships. Uh, there are plenty for uh, every student because they're not competing against uh, graduate students for these type of opportunities. Um, and of course, again, professors are at the heart of, you know, learn the learning environment at liberal arts colleges. They are experts in their fields. Uh, so they will include you in their research that they're doing, collaborate with you on your academic interests. Uh, they help you secure your uh, internships and they offer guidance and mentorship during your college years and beyond college years. Uh, many of the professors will stay in touch with you and uh, because you form, uh, form these really great bonds with them, uh, a lot of these connections last beyond your college years. And of course, uh, faculty office hours are a unique way to get these type of advising. Uh, this is where students can visit their professors to talk about class materials, uh, about the research projects that they may be interested in doing with their professors, or simply to talk about life. 
Now getting a bit more towards the, the cost and the scholarships, which is the main theme for this session, uh, we want to kind of lay out what the cost to expect are for a liberal arts education in the United States, because despite a really great uh, financial aid that many of us offer in scholarships, it's also important to be very transparent into what goes into the journey that is studying abroad for a lot of students. So, you know, when you go to a website or you receive a financial aid award from a school that you've been admitted to, you will likely hear or see about their tuition, their room, and their meal plan with perhaps some additional personal expenses or anything that the college or university chooses to disclose. But there's a bit more than that. And it's important that you know, because uh, it all contributes to the actual cost of studying abroad. And that includes, for instance, the service fee for your visa. Uh, it includes the health insurance that as international students, you will likely need to be enrolled at. It includes the taxes that you will need to pay as a student uh, if you start working here in the United United States within campus. It includes the books, the supplies, the decoration for your dorm room, the transportation, uh, which can be fluctuating, you know, massively. And, and we've seen that over the last few years. And of course, the living costs and just personal expenses. So when thinking about everything that you're about to hear from us about the financial aid and scholarships, it's really important to understand that there's always a bit more. And that bit more is something that is, is quite important to understand and to know the totality of in order to make your decision, whether you make a choice of maybe getting a direct flight uh, to your college and that's something that matters to you as opposed to two or three different flights or the proximity to a major airport or the ability for the college to perhaps provide financial aid when it comes to the dorm, uh, to the books or, or the dorms that you are going to stay in or, or read about. So it's quite important that the cost to expect uh, you realize are beyond just the things that are listed on most websites or on financial aid awards, but also include these other uh, obstacles to an extent that us international students face and that we're hoping to, in being transparent, make you informed of the best possible decision that you can make. All right, you guys, well, let's jump right into it and talk about financial aid. I know that's probably one, one of the most popular questions that I get um, on a daily basis from students is, do you guys offer financial aid? Do I qualify for it? So that's definitely important to cover today. Um, so financial aid is something that's very common in the U.S. and you guys probably heard, some of you might have heard of financial aid for domestic students, which is FAFSA, something that they receive um, in addition to the scholarships and merit-based awards. Um, what's good about liberal arts colleges is typically we are more flexible when it comes to international financial aid and we are able to scholarship you and give you that need-based scholarship on top of your merit-based scholarship because our funding is a little different from state schools. Um, so it would be a great advantage for you guys to apply for a liberal arts school because you will qualify for financial aid. Now, it is important to know the difference between need aware schools and then need blind schools because they have a slightly different process. Um, so I would definitely look for that on a website before you even apply. So for example, for Illinois Wesleyan University, we are kind of both need aware and then we become need blind. So we have a little screening tool for our applicants. We'll have them fill out a financial form where they indicate how much money they're able to contribute annually for their education. We just need to know that because we unfortunately do not have a full ride scholarship for our students. So we only have full tuition scholarship. So we need to know that there's certain amount of money that is left after what we offer is able, um, our students are able to cover themselves, right? So we don't wanna, Put you in a position where you know you're struggling, you're uncomfortable in your um, way of living here in the US. We definitely don't want to jeopardize you that way. So that's why we have that um, need aware kind of screening tool. But then after that, we do not, it's not, you know, if you can apply for financial aid, it's not going to mean that we will deny you based on your application. So we become need blind after you kind of pass that initial screen for that initial amount. Um, I know it's a little complicated that I always get a ton of questions about that, but that's just a way for us to determine um, eligibility based on that, because I mean, unfortunately, finances are always a really important um, aspect of being able to afford a certain school. 
Um, so what does financial aid usually consist of? Typically, it's going to be some additional grants and scholarships from the school itself. It can be work study. So employment on campus, that's something we offer to international students. Um, so you will be working pretty much anywhere in any office on campus. Typically, it's going to be library or in your department. Uh, it can even be a dining center, whatever you might be interested in. And then there's also loans. We um, at Illinois Wesleyan, we do offer some loans for international students, which I think can be also really helpful. Um, I know a lot of state schools do not do any of that. So I think, um, like I said, another advantage of liberal arts schools is uh, more flexibility when it comes to giving out loans and other financial scholarship opportunities. Um, when it comes to packaging your financial aid, there's going to be um, the numbers that you'll see on there might be for just one year, which is what we do at Illinois Wesleyan. We give you an estimate for one year, or it can be a full a four year package that will cover your entire time at a university. And we calculated um, kind of uh, pre made to, the offer will be pre made to you right away. Um, so you just need to double check with your admissions counselor, admissions advisor, and kind of see what that looks like for you. Um, just be aware of, you know, if, if what's, what they're giving you, is it just for one year or do you have to reapply every year? So just be aware of their policies. I know at Illinois Wesleyan, we, your merit-based scholarships will remain the same, um, but then financial aid might change year to year. Um, for international students, typically it will not change, but um, just make sure you're double checking when it comes to the duration of that offer that, that is being made. Um, and then the required forms, of course, the way of applying for financial aid is different for um, all of the schools. I know we at Illinois Wesleyan, we use um, CSS profile, which is um, done through College Board. It's a form, a pretty extensive form that you fill out with your family and you put your um, family's annual income information, some tax information, information about your other assets and things like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you, were you asking a question? Sorry, no, I think you might have unmuted himself accidentally. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, but yeah, so CSS profile is a very common form. Um, but there's also, I know CSS comes with a fee. So typically the schools are able to waive that fee, but it also is very individual. So again, I would recommend definitely reaching out to your school and asking if they require a CSS profile or if there's another form you need to fill out for the financial aid. Um, don't ever be afraid to ask because most schools are not gonna deny you based on the fact that you are asking for financial aid. Uh, we're here to support you. We, we want you to come ultimately and we want you to continue your education at our school. So we will work with you as much as we can to help you out on that. Um, I know some schools accept, uh, they have their own form of international assistance that you can just fill out um, a PDF or something like that. Um, so I'm just gonna browse their website and make sure that you know what exactly is needed. Um, Financially, it can be limited. It is. It might be competitive depending on the school. So I would definitely recommend reaching out early on to make sure that you have enough time for processing. I know at our school, we ask that you give us at least a couple of weeks to look at the CSS profile, um, just because it has to go through a financial aid office and some meetings have to happen. So I would just recommend not waiting until you know late May <laughs> to do that process. Um, yeah, and then definitely, you know, again, if you feel like that's something that can help your family based on your financial situation, don't ever be afraid to apply for it and don't feel discouraged. Um, just because I know a lot of students get kind of scared because they've heard that um, financial aid is not available for international students. Um, and they feel like, you know, they're going to be judged or they're going to be denied based on their application. Um, it's not the case. So definitely ask, definitely apply, it, especially if you need it. And we will try to work with you to help you out. Um, and then if you want to switch to the next slide. Perfect. Thank you. So um, the way they determine financial aid is very complicated, usually, um, and it's more of a financial um, financial aid office conversation. But typically what they're going to be looking at is your family income, how much money your family is making. I know CSS profile is more of an extensive survey, so they will look not only your income, but also how much you're paying in taxes in your country what other assets you have, if you have investments, um, 
retirement funds, even sometimes um, your extended family's income and things like that. Do you have any savings? Does your family have savings? How many people do you have in your household? Do you have any siblings? Do you have anybody else who's in college already? Um, and then um, all those things are gonna be, um, might be the main factor that's uh, come into play when, when it comes to determining financial aid. Um, ultimately, what we're looking for at Illinois Wesleyan is to kind of get a picture of what is really going on, you know, in your family when it comes to financial situation and how we can help if um, the gap between our merit-based scholarships and what you can afford is not a huge, huge gap, then we can definitely help out and we can pair you up with some more grants and some more aid to make sure that you can afford um, that certain program, that certain school. So it, it is pretty flexible, like I said, on our end, at least. So I would definitely recommend filling out CSS and being as honest as you can and provide all the information. Because again, we are working with you. We're not working against you. We're not gonna be judged based on that information. Um, but like I said, again, going back to the timeline point, definitely make sure you have enough time because it is it is quite a quite a bit of information they're asking for, and just make sure you have everything um, pulled up. Your you know what, what your mom and dad do for work, what your siblings do, kind of just make sure you kind of gather that information beforehand, just so it's not stressful when you actually go to fill it out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all for the application. But like I said, um, depending on if it's CSS or another form of aid. Um, aid application, they might be a little different, but typically these are the main points that you will be asked about. All right. So, in addition to financial aid, uh, the other piece to that, uh, the other piece that makes studying in the U.S. financially possible is uh, merit scholarships. Uh, liberal arts colleges offer attractive scholarship to high achieving students. Uh, for academically successful students, there are academic scholarships. Uh, typically, students are automatically considered for the academic scholarships upon completing their admission application. Um, at the same time, we also want to recognize students' talents in the arts. So uh, liberal arts colleges will award performing arts scholarships or visual arts scholarships, depending on the students' talents. And sometimes uh, schools will even award you a language scholarship if you're interested in, say, learning a new language. So, for example, at Center, in addition to performing arts and visual arts scholarships, uh, we also offer a language scholarship for students who are interested in learning a new language. So uh, these uh, special scholarships often require a separate application, whether it is submitting your art portfolio, doing an audition, or doing an interview with the language faculty. So uh, make sure to check out the specific requirements for uh, the special scholarships. And then uh, in the U.S., schools can also offer athletic scholarships uh, for their student athletes. Uh, it's pretty common in bigger universities with bigger uh, sport uh, athletics program. Uh, so as you can tell, with different types of scholarships, there is a lot of financial support and resources for students. And all the institutions represented here today uh, offer many of these types of scholarships that I just talked about. So, for instance, Gettysburg, off, uh, Gettysburg College offers the Eisenhower Scholarship, Beloit offers the World Affairs Scholarship, Illinois Wesleyan offers the Presidential Scholarship, uh, at Center College we offer uh, a fully funded scholarship for international students through our Lincoln Scholars Program and the Brown Fellows Program. Uh, so all of these scholarships are some of our most prestigious and generous scholarship at liberal arts colleges. And we'll be talking about those in detail in just a little bit. So now that you have a good understanding of um, financial aid and scholarships at liberal arts institutions in the United States, we want to give you some quick tips and tricks um, when it comes to applying for financial aid and scholarships. So first, there's some common misconceptions that we want to debust. The first is my grades are good, so I should ex expect a full scholarship. While some colleges might offer full scholarships, it is extremely, extremely rare and very, very, very competitive. There's often a mix between scholarship and financial aid that is gonna help cover that tuition room and board. But as we mentioned in the cost to expect, there's still extra costs that are your indirect costs that 
you should are going to have to plan out for with your family to make uh, education in the United States affordable. So between financial aid and scholarship, you might be able to have tuition, room and board covered, but you're still going to have to come up with health insurance and uh, travel to the United States and your book fees at most colleges in the United States. In addition to that, financial aid packages in some institutions uh, might include loan and work study. So some of that money you might be paying back after you graduate, or in some cases, you're going to be expected to work on campus. So in the United States on your F-1 visa, you can work up to 20 hours a week on campus. And a lot of financial aid packages do include work study in the financial aid packages. So those are some things that we get a lot of emails do offer full scholarships. Those are some things to consider when you're asking those questions. Another thing is a lot of times we hear that education in the U.S. is unaffordable. I know that when you go on our websites and look at the cost of our tuition and room and board, it can be a little shocking and scary. But I hope when we break down our scholarships in our upcoming institutional slides that you can see that we do offer good merit scholarships at our institutions. And each of us do offer good financial aid packages as well. We all embrace diversity on our campus and we want to make our education affordable to students around the world. So we do encourage you to apply um, and we will We'll break down the scholarships um, each of our institutions and our institutional slides so you will get to hear what those prices are but education in the U.S. can be really affordable and if you again I know you've heard of this a lot in the presentation but if you say you need financial aid you won't be offered admission this is not true I know we talked about need aware and need blind but I do want to just emphasize again need aware while we do take into consideration your need in the application process. The reason we do that is because oftentimes we're accepting students knowing that we can give you a financial aid package and meet your needs. So we can provide the financial aid package for you to be able to come to our institution. While at a need blind institution, they might not look at your need and they might accept you, but they might not give you any aid. So you might not be able to then go to that institution. So it might be a little more competitive, but you just have to plan out a little more ahead of time. Um, make sure you're getting those applications in in time. Make sure that you know from us what applications we need. At Gettysburg College, we do not accept the CSS profile. We have our own profile. So make sure you're asking those questions. Also, we offer virtual interviews. I talk about virtual interviews all the time, but it's a great opportunity for you to sit one-on-one -on -one with us and you talk about your academics, what you do outside the classroom, and us to get to know you beyond your application. So take advantage of the application process and also contacting us, and this will help you stand out in the application process. And it's not impossible to get financial aid at an institution in the U.S., some other tips, definitely use email addresses that you check often. I recommend this for your financial aid applications, your common app in any TOEFL, IELTS, and Duolingo English test that you are taking. It's easiest if everything is in one place. Uh, double check information before you submit it. An extra digit can make a big difference. If we give you a financial aid package for a certain number and then you come back to us and say oh i accidentally added a zero but i actually can't afford that to come to your educate like to come to your college that's going to make a big difference so make sure you're double checking your documents before you submit them to us as we've already said know your deadlines it would be a huge bummer to miss out on one of our scholarships because you missed the deadline by a day and i already talked about demonstrated interest but demonstrated interest can really help you stand out in the application process. So you coming today to listen to us is showing your demonstrated interest. But again, make sure you're taking advantage of our virtual off visits that we're offering this year. And as you have questions, check our website and make sure that you're contacting us. So I'm gonna pass it on to Ernan and we're gonna briefly introduce each of our institutions. Thank you very much, Danielle. So yeah, now that you've heard uh, what a liberal arts is and how it can be affordable, let's look at a few examples. As I said, I, I work at Bullard College where I studied myself as an international student. And one of the reasons why I was able to was because of Bullard's generosity and financial aid. Every student is eligible for scholarships and financial aid here at Bullard. And out of the admitted students uh, that we have internationally, over 95% of them have their need met. So it can be, again, a very affordable, very fantastic opportunity. 
for you all. But Beloit College is located in Wisconsin, as you can see in the map right there. We're kind of in the middle of the US in the northern area. We're close to cities like Chicago, Madison, and Milwaukee. But our city uh, itself is an absolutely lovely area where, again, I've chosen to live with for seven years now. And it has everything that you would want while also giving you the academic privacy to really make the most out of your studies there. We're a liberal arts and science school. We're private, we're independent, co-ed, and residential, which is one of the most beautiful aspects of Beloit, the living component that really shapes you in ways beyond just the academics. We also happen to be uh, Wisconsin's first and oldest college, and we're one of the colleges that changed lives. So it's a famous book that is uh, has been published here for over 20 years in the US and really highlight some of the schools that because of its student-centered approach, because of its scholarship, because of the way it makes high impact experiences part of the day-to-day -day life, uh, it changes your lives. And although it sounds very cliche, when I say it, it absolutely changed mine. We are a small school with just over a thousand students, but out of that small population, over 15% of our students are international. So a very high proportion of international students coming from all over the world. We have Brazilians on campus, uh, we have people from South America, from Africa, from the Middle East, from Asia, from Europe. So you really get people from absolutely all over, which is fabulous. And you also get one of the most innovative uh, educational experiences out there. We offer some incredible programs that put you at the forefront of career preparation. And we do a really good job that after graduating, you on average, 94% uh, of our students are going to get a job or be in grad school right after uh, leaving Beloit. So that's something that we do quite well. As Daniel mentioned, you see a picture there of our Center for Entrepreneurship, something that if you're interested in business, in developing the idea that you can be your own boss, your own company, self-employment as a profession, it's something that we do pretty well. And over the 40 different majors that you get to choose from, more than one third of all our students are double majoring, or almost every single student is either doing a major or a minor combination. So we want you to try new things. We want you to explore it. And we offer scholarships that go up to $40,000 every single year for international students. And in addition to that, we can have some more financial aid as well. So again, try it. It's easy to apply. Uh, and it might just open up a door that you didn't know existed. That's what happened with me. And it ended up being life changing. So yeah, check out Beloit College. And I'll pass it on to our friends in Center College. Thank you, Arnon. And uh, hello again. Um... I am very happy to share a little bit about Center College today and what it's like to study here as an international student, uh, because I am also a Center College alumnus and a former international student. So uh, Center, it's a small private liberal arts and sciences college. If you're wondering where Center is, uh, we're located in a small city called Danville in Kentucky. Uh, Danville, it's a small city with a welcoming community and a safe environment for international students. And not to mention, uh, if you enjoy fried chicken like I do, uh, this is a state where KFC originated. So there you go, uh, KFC. <laughs> uh, many international students uh, are coming to us from all over the world and they call center their home away from home because we have such a tight knit community. And it's especially true uh, within the international student uh, community. Uh, at center, we are committed to providing our students with a premier education, experiential learning opportunities, that prepare students for meaningful careers and incredible global experiences in a supportive and inclusive community. And these commitments are often highlighted by different rankings in the US News and World Report, whether it's our best undergraduate teaching or our fantastic study abroad programs. So here at Center, we have something called the Center Commitment. Uh, and three things are guaranteed for all of our students. So if a student is interested in doing a mentor research and or internship opportunities, they should be able to do that. If they want to study abroad or study away at least once, they should be able to do that. And we are confident that they'll be able to do all these amazing experiences and graduate on time within four years that if for some reason you're unable to do this, these things within four years, you can come back for a fifth year for tuition free. Uh, 
So here at Center, uh, we provide generous merit scholarships up to $30,000 uh, per year to accomplished students. And we also provide some financial aid. Uh, we are a need aware institution. Um, but earlier I touched a little bit about, you know, some of our scholarships and I wanna dive a little deeper into a couple of them. We uh, have full funding scholarships for international students through our premier scholarship programs, such as the Lincoln Scholars Program and the Brown Fellows Program. Uh, in recent years, we have had two Lincoln scholars from Brazil, one of whom is still studying here at Center. Uh, if you're interested in getting in touch with him, I'm happy to put you in touch. And uh, if you're interested in applying for our fully funded premier scholarship, uh, you must complete your admission application and a separate premier scholarship application uh, by December 1st. So that's in two weeks. Make sure to note that down. Um, the way we invest in our students uh, translate to really great graduation outcomes. So 98% of center graduates are employed in the field of their choice or they are enrolled in some of the top graduate schools around the world within 10 months of graduation. Uh, we're very excited that Center's alumni network continues to grow, and many of them have found meaningful careers and meaningful postgraduate studies after, after graduation. Uh, in fact, currently one of our uh, graduate from Brazil, who was our first Lincoln Scholar at Center, is now in graduate school at Columbia University in New York, getting his master's degree in uh, global thought. So Center grads uh, go to ama many amazing places. Um, all the things that I just talked about, they can be found on, on, on our website. So uh, I sincerely hope that you will uh, consider applying to Center. And uh, thank you for your time today. I am very excited to work with you on your college application journey. All right, and a quick introduction on Gettysburg College. We're a highly selective, nationally ranked college. We have about 2,400 students on our campus from 40 states and actually 50 countries. That's our fall number, so this slide has not been updated yet. So we're really proud of the diversity on our campus. Gettysburg College is located in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So we are located on the star in this map. So we're South Central Pennsylvania. We're actually 10 minutes from the Maryland border. So we're an hour north of Baltimore, an hour and a half from Washington, DC. We do have a shuttle that runs to Baltimore and Washington, DC three times daily for our students. So we have an easy connection to those larger cities that surround us. Uh, Gettysburg itself, we're not your typical small college town because we are a famous town in the United States, so we welcome over 3 million visitors to our town each year, and that brings a unique diversity and vibrancy to our downtown area. A lot of really cool shops and restaurants that our students get to take advantage of all year round. We offer over 65 majors, minors, and pre-professional programs. Most popular majors for international students are computer science, economics, business, international global studies and political science. Um, as far as our learning ex experiences go, our research is really popular on Gettysburg campus. So over 55% of our students do research before they graduate. We have an amazing summer program, fund 70 students every summer to stay on campus, do paid research. So they get provided housing, they get provided a meal plan, and then they're actually getting paid to do research. And then those students are funded to travel nationally and present that research and published in research journals with our faculty members. Over 70% of our students complete at least one internship before they graduate. Some of our programs and our majors actually require internships. So making sure that our students, as all liberal arts institutions, our students are having those hands-on learning opportunities before they graduate. All of our accepted students are automatically considered for merit scholarship awards that range up to $39,000 annually. So these do not require an application when you apply. It's purely looking at your grades at the time you apply where tests were optional. So we also don't require an SAT to consider you for these merit scholarship awards. Our Eisenhower scholarship is our most prestigious scholarship. This does require an application in addition to academic excellence, it's looking for civic engagement experience. So some way you've made a positive impact on your community. This is $43,000 annually, and we had five international students receive this award last year, so it is not impossible to receive this award. We do have our Sunderman Conservatory of Music on our campus. This is our one program that students must apply specifically to, and they must audition to it. So we also evaluate our music students for a music scholarship as well. And then we do offer need-based financial aid. So if you have questions about Gettysburg, please don't hesitate to reach out to me after this presentation. Great. 
All right, so I will talk to you guys briefly about Illinois Wesleyan. Um, making sure I'm keeping everybody on time. So promise not gonna be <laughs> too long, but I wanted to share a, li a little bit where we are as well. So we are um, in the state of Illinois, two hours away from Chicago. We will be really close to Beloit. I was actually in Wisconsin a few days ago. Um, we are um, also a liberal arts small school, about 1,700 students on our campus. Um, student faculty ratio is about 12 to 1, so smaller classrooms, um, average size of our classrooms is 17, and then for labs, it's 14 students per class. So it really provides for that um, individualized education and close connection with your professors. Um, Illinois Wesleyan is really big on research. You guys will, will be participating in student research, um, which is really valuable on the undergraduate level. Um, our success rates are really great. They, they keep going up. We went from 95 to 97% of students um, getting a job or uh, being enrolled in a master's program within, I think, one year or six months after graduation. Um, we have a lot of student life here on campus. We are known for our activities and student clubs and athletics and all the great things that are going on in our town here. Um, we have lots of our national students. We had a great year last year. Very thankful for all of our admits. Um, we are sitting at about 80 international students right now, which is awesome. Uh, we also have exchange students coming to our campus as well twice a year. Um, Definitely a lot of opportunities. Some of our famous programs are a music theater program, which is in top 10 in the nation. Uh, so if you are anything about, you know, fine arts, um, creating something, music, um, acting, our acting program is amazing as well. This will be a really good place for you as well as playing an instrument. Our music programs are awesome. They also come with additional scholarship, uh, similar to what Danielle was just talking about. So if you are, um, if you have that in you, we'll provide additional scholarships for students who are non-music majors, but would like to continue playing instruments. We have an additional scholarship that they receive um, on a semester basis. So that's a really cool incentive for you to continue your uh, music education while you are here studying something else. Um, and then in terms of our scholarships, we have two full tuition scholarship. Um, and it's important to notice that it's full tuition, but not full ride. So you would still be responsible for room and board. However, that covers your entire tuition, which is a great help. It's over an 80% discount. Um, we currently have two students on that scholarship here on campus, um, but you get to keep that for all four years. On top of that, we also provide everybody with merit-based scholarships, which is, um, based on your application, you don't have to apply for it. Everybody's automatically being considered, so you don't have to apply for any of our scholarships. Um, there's no separate application. I know I get that question a lot. Um, and our deadlines for presidential scholarship, which is full tuition, is February 15th. So like I said, just don't wait until May to apply for that, and you'll be considered um, automatically. And then married base, you can apply at any time, and we'll consider you. That is usually anywhere from 10,000 and then up to about $36,000 is what you can be getting from us. Um, and then like I mentioned before, need-based financial aid is also a thing at Wesleyan. So feel free to apply. You just need to complete the CSS profile and we'll process it and put them both together, your married base and your financial aid. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of us. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to talk to you. So that wraps up our presentation. So now's a great time if you have questions to go ahead and type those in the chat and we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about financial aid scholarship or just the liberal arts education. While we wait for questions in the chat, could I ask a question? Um, I have received this question from students uh, a few times. Uh, international students are often aware or or either they know or think that uh, loans might not be an available option uh, for them to finance their studies, in, their studies in the US. Do any of your institutions offer institutional loans to international students? I think one of you mentioned it uh, during your presentation today. How would that work and what kind of payment uh, you know, would be available for international students. 
So I'm happy to start. Gettysburg College alone is included in each one of our international students' financial aid package. And so when we accept an international student in their acceptance letter, they have their merit scholarship listed out. And then they have a second letter, which is their financial aid award. So it's a four year letter. Um, so you know exactly how much you would have to bring for all four years. And then it has a loan for all four years as well. And the max of that is $5,500. And it's up to the student and their family if they accept all of that loan, a part of that loan, or absolutely none of that loan. So a student doesn't have to accept that loan if they don't want to. And the repayment starts six months after graduation. I don't remember the interest rate on that. It is like a set interest rate. But um, so that is a part of every one of our financial aid packages at Gettysburg and it is totally up to the student if they accept it or not. I don't know if anybody else offers loans. At Beloit, we do. Very similar, Danielle. You don't need to pay back until nine months after graduating from Beloit. A very low interest rate, I think under 5%. And it's completely flexible. So it only goes up to $3,000 a year, which isn't much, but it can make the difference for any of you. We don't want to get you in tremendous amounts of debt. But if you choose to take it, you can take, let's say the first year 3000, the year after that only 500, the year after that, none of it at all. And so it doesn't accrue interest while you're in college and you don't need to pay it back until way after. So it's just an additional bit of help that we hope can sometimes make a difference for some students applying to Bullitt. Yeah, so ours at Illinois Wesleyan is really similar. Um, it is up to $2,000 a year, so about $8,000 if you decide to do that for all four years. Um, it is also part of every financial aid package, but again, if you are not comfortable accepting it, that's totally up to you. Um, not sure about the interest rate, which I would need to look that up. I want to say it's somewhere, it's very similar to domestic FAFSA parent plus loan, which I don't know what the interest rate on it on that one, but whatever it is, probably under 10, hopefully 10%. Um, the repayment doesn't start until um, six months after graduation also. Out of all the four schools here, Center is the only one that doesn't offer uh, loan options for international students. Uh, most of our financial aid packages are just institutional grants. Uh, and additionally, uh, if a student uh, said they want to do a on-campus job, a work study is added on top of their uh, onto their financial aid. So, uh, merit scholarship plus financial aid package that includes grants and work study. Thank you so much. So do we have other questions? People want to type their questions, turn on their mics. If there aren't any, again, we're more than happy to connect with you individually. Sometimes, you know, it's not uh, the easiest to type it on the chat for everyone to see, or it's something a little more personal. So again, you have all our emails now, and we're happy to connect with you at an individual level as well. That's perfect. That's right. Um, and again, this session will be available on our YouTube channel. So you might be getting questions in your emails from students who were in here as well. So um so i think if there aren't more questions i want to thank each one of you for taking this time today to talk to us and to bring this information uh it's a pleasure um as usual to work with you all um so on behalf of education usa brazil thank you very much for your time yes and thank you Achila and simone for helping us organize this it's been fun thank you for having us Thank yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So see you next time. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care.